more metrics you should be tracking. Yes, metrics, boring, eh? Not really. Listen in, because it's the Marketing for Owners podcast where I, John Bart, show you how you can create your self-marketing company, a company that markets itself, brings in new leads, new customers, while you can go off and do the things you'd rather be doing, or perhaps you ought to be doing. So, metrics. Metrics are things that need to be tracked. Yes, if you don't like numbers, sorry, you're going to have to get to like numbers. If you have a business, it's all about the numbers. Uh, and it's not just when you see your accountant or your CPA after a, a few months or after a year. Depends how long you put that off. There are many things. We've discussed them in the past. Conversion rates, uh, money, anything to do with money, costs, everything like that. But there's a bunch more metrics. Now, in our world, we should be generating interesting, valuable content for our potential clients and for our existing clients to reinforce our authority, our expertise and our position in our local or international or national industry and trade segment. I sound like I read that off, but I think I just made it up. But that's what we should be doing. We have to provide interesting information. We have to be the source. We, you go to CNN, you go to the BBC, uh, those kind of places for your information. We need to be the CNN or the BBC for our industry, our trade, our products. So we need to supply all that information. And that means that when people are ready to buy and they've been visiting your site or following or they're subscribed to your list or whatever, then when they're ready to buy, you are the person they come to. So to make sure we are offering the right kind of content, there are other metrics we can measure. For example, and this is all going to relate to online, back on your website. So for example, how long are they on your website? Oh, and I suppose I'd better stop there. This is under the understanding that you have analytics on your website. Google Analytics is the de facto analytics program. It's free. They do have a paid one, by the way. If you want to laugh, go see how much that costs. But it's free. Everybody who knows what they're doing online will use Google Analytics. Now, there are additional um, programs such as uh, Kissmetrics and other things such as Crazy Egg. There are many other things you can add and there are further analytics, but that's enough. You can get all this information from there. <clears throat> if you don't know, by the way, how to get Google Analytics onto your website, just email me, John, J-O-N, at marketingforowners.com. Ask me and I'll point you in the right direction. No, sorry, we don't do that kind of thing. We're not a, uh, we don't provide services like that. But I'll point you in the right direction. It's dead easy. You can get it done very low price. So how long are people on your website? So in other words, when they arrive, say they come from Google or wherever, they arrive at your website, how long are they spending to read it? If, the, if they're there for 10 seconds, it means they've read 10 seconds worth, wasn't really their thing, and they're back to Google. Google knows that. Google is not silly. Google thinks, oh gosh, that happens a lot with this website. It can't be very interesting. We'll demote it a bit. But <clears throat> if you can make sure your content is good, they will be there for longer and they will read the whole article. Yeah, understand? What about how many pages they consume in one visit? So again, if you're bringing people into an article and, they, and the average is one page or just around one page, then it means that you're not directing them on to other content or you don't provide enough related content to that piece. Because if that was interesting, why wouldn't they read something else that's related? Perhaps you're forgetting to put links within your content to your other articles to tempt people to read a little longer. I can think of a number of times when I've been to some uh, somebody's site that I like and I've as I've gone down there are other links and I think oh gosh and I've had to open them up in new tabs and then go on and read those afterwards and I've ended up spending 
half an hour when I just planned to just see what that article was about. And I've ended up consuming about five pages and that's good. So that's what we want to do. What about how many repeat visitors? Uh, so uh, a common metric for many is that 70 or 70 to 80 percent of the visitors are new. But how about if you get that down? Because you want more of more repeat visitors. Yes, you want new ones, but you want a lot of people to come back. If they're not coming back, it's because it wasn't good enough. The content is not interesting enough. Or you haven't captured their lead, sent them information via email to tempt them to come back, to tell them what new information you've added. Mm, all this stuff starting to make sense. What about in emails? Now, for instance, when you, I just mentioned email, if you're not email marketing, well, email marketing makes it sound like it's some weird, difficult, new thing you've got to learn. Email marketing means you are sending emails with a purpose. <laughs> it means you have a strategy. So it is just, so you're sending out emails every day, but these are sending them to a targeted audience to convince them to become buyers eventually. Uh, well, not even that, to convince them you are an expert in your space and that you are worth following so that when they're ready to buy, they'll try you. So on your emails, how many clicks? So if you send out a number of emails and it's got links in, because you want to put links in to get them back onto your website. Don't allow them to just read emails. Get them back onto your website to encourage them to see what information's there and then they can look around about your products and services while they're there. So how many clicks? If people aren't clicking what's in your website, in your email, perhaps you need to adjust the way you invite them to click. How about how many opens? The open rate, that's the core metric of email marketing, the open rate. If the open rates aren't good enough, if they're below 10%, then you seriously need to get to work. It's probably your subject matter. It might be your audience. Have they not opted in? Have you, are you spamming? Things like that. Don't do that, by the way. <clears throat> and how many unsubscribes? Now, some people uh, push the envelope and say that if you're not getting many unsubscribes, you're not marketing hard enough. I am not of that type. I actually, in e-commerce companies, quite often just, once you bought something, will just send you offer after offer after offer. And, and if you, even if you like the company, if you weren't planning on buying something else, it can get annoying and you can unsubscribe. So I'm not a fan. We don't do that. We have an e-commerce company and we do not do that. And we don't get many unsubscribes, but monitor them. If your unsubscribe percentages start to rise, you may have changed something that isn't working. If they start to drop, you may have done something that is working. Do more of that. What about how many new opt-ins? Are you tracking that? How many do you get each week? As a percentage of, of traffic or anything, is it rising? Is it falling? What are you doing to increase it? So if you get, if you're getting, say you're getting um, three or four opt-ins, uh, well, let, let's say, um, say you're getting 50 new opt-ins a week. Maybe you're getting less, maybe you're getting more. But over time, if you don't just stick for being happy with that. If you can get 50, you can get 51. If you can get 51, you can get 52. Always try something new. Change the color of the opt-in button, change the offer, change anything to try and increase it. But if you haven't got the metrics, if you're not recording the metrics, how would you know? You need this information. Easiest place to record it? Um, you, I've told you before, you should have a Gmail account or a Google for work, which was previously known as Google Apps account, because it comes with Google Sheets and that's just tracked online. So you, when you fill it in, it just saves, it's just there, it's free in a spreadsheet. And then anyone else, you can share it with others, they can update it for you. Remember, you don't have to be doing this. Anyone can do it for you, anyone of your team, as long as you've shown them what to do. There are many more metrics, so think about it in your business, what's going to be relevant and help you advance your company. Now, it is a Thursday, obviously, drive time podcast, because we like to listen while we are in the kitchen, like here, uh, doing the washing up. 
or in actual fact, obviously I'm doing a podcast rather than listening to one. I'll be back doing the washing up in a sec. But it's today is from Dave MacArthur, Mechanic to Millionaire. And it is called the Mechanic to Millionaire podcast. It's absolutely fascinating. He does it with his wife. And uh, I'm just trying to think. I think every episode I've listened to has his wife. I'm not sure she's always on there. But they're great. They're real. And they're very relatable. They're not sort of super slick professional presenters. It's genuine stuff. And it's a fascinating story of how he went from being a mechanic to where he is now. But he's, he's very humble and he's, much of his information is inspiring. Uh, so he, he explains the things he reads and things he listens to to be inspired. And a lot of, a lot of uh, this is, is all in the head. You know, it's a mental game. So you need inspiration. So Dave MacArthur at Mechanic to Millionaire podcast. Just jump on iTunes, jump on Stitcher Radio, SoundCloud. It's probably on there as well. You'll be able to find it. It's a very popular podcast. It's been around for quite a while. You'll like it. Let me know what you think. And if you want to give ours a rating, by the way, Marketing for Owners on iTunes, go in there, jump in, give us a review. Tell me what you really think. I'd love to know. There's quite a few ratings there, and it's always good to hear. If you let me know, if you after that you go on to marketingforowners.com forward slash free book, you'll get a gift. And then I'll actually find out what you said and be able to say thank you. See you soon.